Now, you were talking about this mother, Brooke. One of the victims, 14-year-old Alyssa Alhadeff, by all accounts, a great athlete. She was on the soccer team, a very excellent student, has lots of friends who are here. Everyone we've talked to here knew her. And her mother, Lori, is obviously a very grief-stricken mother. She has two younger sons. Alyssa was her oldest daughter. She's grief-stricken, but she is extremely strong. And I want you to listen to what she said to us. How? How do we allow a gunman to come into our children's school? How do they get through security? What security is there? There's no metal detectors. The gunman, a crazy person, just walks right into the school, knocks down the window of my child's door, and starts shooting, shooting her and killing her. President Trump, you say, what can you do? You can stop the guns from getting into these children's hands. Put metal detectors at every entrance to the schools. What can you do? You can do a lot. This is not fair to our families that our children go to school and have to get killed. I just spent the last two hours putting the burial arrangements for my daughter's funeral, who's 14. President Trump, please do something. Do something. Action! We need it now. These kids need safety now. May Alyssa and the 16 other victims rest in peace. Brooke. Sorry. Oh. Gary, thank you. I'm sorry. It's just... Congressman Ted Deutsch, help me out, of Florida here, who represents the district. Just hearing that mother, I'm sorry. Uh, just, it got me. Yeah, I, Brooke, I don't know that I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that. What do you say? Here's the thing. I was at that same, that same rally with all these students. And, and what she said, what that grieving mother said is, the most powerful message that everyone needs to hear. And it's the message, everyone. It's the message that I've heard from PTA moms and school board members. It's the message that I heard at that rally from two girls who came up to me and, and said that they were in the school. One of them said, they said, we need action. We have to do something. One of them said, I, I sat there as my friends and watched my friend's face get blown off. Her friend said that she, she was underneath someone else who bled out, who died on top of her. How, how much more of this? But you're on did, Capitol Hill. Right. You're on Capitol Hill. Right. I mean, let me just speak for so many people who have yeah, been and, yelling at the televisions, right. yelling at members of Congress, how nothing has been done. Right, right. And you know what? They're right. They're right. And I join them in their frustration and their anger. Uh, they're absolutely right to be a angry. Here's, look. Uh, this, the, here are some things that we probably ought to start talking about, right? Let's go. I, I can tell you all of the things, that's basic steps that we can take to make sure that everyone gets a background check and to make sure that if you're too dangerous to fly, you should get a gun. That's all true. Which and we he did, did and passes background you know what check. Else? Next. You know what else? You know what kind of gun this gunman used? A, an an AR-15 AR style weapon. You know what kind of gun is always used in these? An AR-15 assault rifle. What are you going to do a, about it? It's a weapon that's made to kill the maximum number of people. What are you going to do about it? Well, it was, until 2004, it was illegal to manufacture or to own them. Illegal. And that wasn't, that didn't come from crazy left-wing liberals. President Reagan thought that that might help dry up the scourge of these guns that wreak so much havoc. I don't understand why in this discussion that we're having, why we continue, we, we advocate for the simple things without any response from my colleague. The speaker will not bring up a single bill for debate. We have to focus on the big things, like making sure that guns that are made to kill the maximum number of people cannot be used that way. The speaker today, really honed in on mental illness, which is absolutely germane to the conversation. And I'm 100%. not, I'm not uh, dismissing that, but it, you, you know, I, I just in reading everything that I have from it's from Republicans, mental health, mental illness, hearing it, reading it in a, a Trump tweet today. I mean, you have this mother 
screaming at the president, who, who, who did take time today to try to be the consoler in chief and spoke directly to the camera to try to talk to kids that he wants to make them safe, but there, I heard no how. I right. heard no specifics. I heard no mention of gun laws. Right. Which makes this mother angry. And she is, she is right, and everyone is right to be angry. The fact is, we have to deal with the mental health crisis in our country, we, and, and we must. I don't want to demonize people with mental illness and make this all about them. We have to provide access to treatment and care for people with mental illness. That's true. But the fact is... How many more shootings is it going to take for, for your colleagues? to Brooke, get it together and fix up, fix Brooke, this. I had, I, before I left DC yesterday, I had so many of my colleagues come up and grab my shoulder and, and grab my arm and, and express their heartfelt condolences. And I, and, Which is and lovely. I, it's lovely and I believe them. And today they were gonna have a moment of silence on the house floor. But you shouldn't have to have something like this happen in your own district to people that you know and care about and represent for it to matter to them. It's not political. It is not politicizing this issue to talk about ending gun violence. The only people who are politicizing this issue are the people who are looking for reasons not to have the conversation. 